Hey guys, welcome back. We just finished talking about uh, resistance start, induction run, AC motor, single phase, okay? And uh, that's just one of the single phase induction motors that you are going to see. You'll know you have a uh, resistance start induction run motor because it's not going to have any you know, capacitors hanging around on the outside because these capacitors that uh, go with these next two motors are always like sitting there outside the motor on a can or something like that, you know, mounted to the motor frame, okay? And so the resistance start, induction run, it's a pretty good motor and it runs perfectly. One of the problems with it is it doesn't have a lot of start torque, guys. And the reason it doesn't have a lot of start torque here, let's get it back in here, is because there's only a 30 to 50 degree, you know, phase angle difference between the start winding and the run winding, and they are actually physically sitting here 90 degrees apart. So when you get that rotating magnetic field when this thing starts up, it is rotating and it's enough to get it to start and run. The problem is it's not rotating very smoothly, and so it doesn't, you know, start up with as much torque as, you know, you can, you can have. And so what they do is, um, they make a motor that's very similar. It's still going to have the run winding. Okay, guys. And it's still going to have the centrifugal switch here like that. And instead of just a straight up, you know, winding on this, uh, start winding here, it's going to have a capacitor and a winding. So this is the start winding, guys. And this is the start capacitor, okay? And uh, there's the run winding. Looks very similar to the last one. The only difference is this one right here. Now, if we talk about, you know, this last one, we had the run winding, which is a big inductor, and it lags quite a bit. And then the start winding, which is also an inductor, and it lags, but not as much, right? And so we had that 30 to 50 degree phase angle. Well, this particular machine, the way they set it up is, um, you know, you got that start winding, it's hanging, or the run winding, I should say. There's the uh, I run, right guys? Lagging by quite a bit. And then they make it so that this one here, the start winding, with the capacitor in series, they've set it up in such a way that it's actually leading the current, the voltage slightly. And so you get this, um, there's the uh, I start right here. And what that does is it gives you a 90 degree difference between the start winding and the run winding, about 90 degrees, which is really handy because if I can find my other drawing here, where did I put it? Right here, you know, this is a little reminder here. This was the induction resistance start induction run, okay, and there was 30 to 50 degrees between these two windings here. Now, because I've added a capacitor and made this run lead by a little bit, I can actually have 90 degrees between them. And so if I look at my run winding, what I'll have is my start winding hit first. Exactly 90 degrees later, I'll have my run winding, and then 90 degrees later, I'll get my start winding here. And so I'll get north, 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 north. A nice smooth rotating magnetic field that you know runs around this circle in a perfect spacing if you will and what that causes is a much smoother startup and much more start torque and so this particular motor is going to have you know be used on loads that are uh, harder to start okay so you'll see the induction the resistance start induction run motor on light duty loads, things that are easy to start, maybe a pool pump, maybe a fan, uh, things like that where it's no big deal to start them up. And then you will see the capacitor start induction run on compressors, on other machinery that has to start under load. Okay. And so uh, that's where you're going to see it. Now the downside to this particular machine is that it is more expensive and also slightly less reliable. It's got one more component in there, okay? It's got a capacitor in there. And if you know anything about motors, you know, this capacitor can be a problem. It, you know, can blow and do other things and cause problems. So a little bit less reliable, but uh, a lot more start torque. And by the way, guys, you know, I, all this stuff is in the... Uh, 
in the book, right guys? So if you're looking at unit five handout two, there's my capacitor start induction run motor. You can see the capacitor hanging around on the side here. And uh, you can also see that same drawing uh, that I drew there that shows the relationship between the run winding and the start winding currents, okay guys? And so more torque, that's what you're gonna get with this bad boy right there. Now there's one more single phase motor. There's actually more than one more, okay? But there's another one that I wanna talk about and that is the capacitor start, capacitor run. Now you're gonna recognize the capacitor start, capacitor run motor because it's going to have the two capacitors on there, okay? Now, the thing about the capacitor start, capacitor run, is I'm gonna draw a drawing here of it. And by the way, guys, the notes here, it says same as above, okay? But the start winding remains in the circuit at all times. In other words, there's no centrifugal switch required. That's true, but there are, you know, guys, there's as many motor configurations out there. You know, I can't possibly list them all, okay? And so this capacitor stir, capacitor run, you're going to find them with centrifugal switches, without centrifugal switches. Um, so don't be surprised if you see one with a centrifugal switch. In fact, in my experience, most of them do have it. I'm going to make a drawing here, guys, of the capacitor start, a typical capacitor start, capacitor run. Okay, so we're going to have the run winding here. We're going to have our start capacitor here, and uh, we're going to have our start winding here just like this one. Okay, this is our capacitor start induction run. But um, most capacitors start will have the centrifugal switch in there and then there's our run capacitor guys and it's sitting in here like this okay and um, what's going to happen is it's going to start up guys with both these capacitors in there and that will be optimized so that this thing starts up with maximum amount of torque and then the centrifugal switch here, guys, is going to open up at some point and take this guy out. And it's going to be just running here. I don't know how I labeled this before, but this is the run cap. I think I said that wrong earlier. This is the start cap. This is the start winding, okay? This is the run winding, okay? Now, it's going to open up at some point and take out this start cap. And so it's going to leave a little bit of a capacitor in there. It's also going to leave the start winding in there, guys. And what that's going to do is two things. It's going to be optimized for maximum torque when it's starting with the amount of capacitance that's in there. But then once it's running, it's going to leave the start winding in there and a capacitor in there. And that's going to be optimized for running. And what you're going to get in the end, guys, is a machine that has a nice, smooth, rotating magnetic field once it starts. I'm looking here. I got papers everywhere here. Okay, so we're back to this drawing here. And because my start winding is staying in the circuit, guys, I'm going to have this nice, smooth, rotating magnetic field at all times. It's not going to start to oscillate. Because don't forget, the this motor here, the one with the capacitor start this is in the circuit when it's starting up but once it's running and this switch is open all i'm left with is the run winding which is an oscillating magnetic field okay which is you know which is great but wouldn't it be great if we could have this rot you know the start winding in there all the time and rotating all the time and that's what i get with this system right here i get a optimized for start torque with two capacitors in there and then once it's running I will have it optimized for running and the start winding will remain in the circuit, okay, once it starts. And so this winding will have to be wired up in such a way that it remains in the circuit when it's running, okay. And so what you get is excellent start torque with this particular machine and excellent running torque, okay. And you are going to see a capacitor start, capacitor run motor with the two capacitors on the outside this is the heavy duty one all right and so we've got basically we've talked about three different single phase induction motors guys the first one is the resistance start it is going to have it's going to be the cheapest 
Okay, it's going to run fine for most situations, but it's going to lack a little bit of start torque. Okay, then there is the capacitor start induction run, which is going to have improved start torque over the resistance start induction run, but both the in resistance start and capacitor start, they both run on a single winding once it's running, okay? Because this switch is gonna be open and the start circuit is gonna be out of there altogether. So it doesn't matter if you have induction or resistance start or capacitor start, once it's running, it's running and it doesn't even know about the start winding or the start cap, okay? The third kind of motor that we're talking about here is the capacitor start capacitor run, and it is kind of the best of the best, okay? It's gonna to have tons of start torque and it's gonna have improved running torque because it's got a smoother rotating magnetic field. Okay, guys? Now, there are other motors out there. Some have centrifugal switches, some do not. All single phase motors, though, are gonna have the start winding and the run winding, okay? And some single phase motors will have the centrifugal switch to take the run start winding out. Most will, actually. But some will not have a centrifugal switch at all, and they just leave the start winding in all the time. And in fact, your instrumentation pump, you know the little pump that's run by a VFD in your instrumentation shop? That is a motor that has no centrifugal switch, okay? And so it has a start winding that's in there all the time. It's designed to be in there and stay in there. And uh, the reason for that is because it's being run by a VFD. And so uh, there's no guarantee that there's gonna be enough speed, <coughs> excuse me, to open a centrifugal switch. Okay, so it's just sort of optimized motor for uh, VFD use. So I don't want you to think that uh, the three main types of AC single phase motor that we've talked about are the only three that you're going to be seeing out there. Okay, you're going to see all kinds of different configurations, but uh, those are the three main ones and those are the three that I wanted to talk about. Now, we're going to have another video talking about just troubleshooting AC motors. Okay, and you should come back for that. Okay, guys.